um, personal branding and why personal branding is so needed uh, to help your business and venture grow. Um, we have today Raquel Figlo. She's someone who, like I mentioned, um, is just a boss of bosses. How do I know she's a boss of bosses? <laughs> Usually when I have guests, they have one mic attached to them like I have. She just naturally has two mics to her. No, keep it. You're a boss lady. It's all good. I just love this. And I haven't, you all haven't seen her yet on the live feed, but you'll see what I'm talking about. It's just such a testament to the, the confidence that she has. She's like this bull that just charges, but is also kind and also has this like, like, um, you know, beautiful energy to her, but she just gets stuff done. And so I want us to all learn from her. And in one sec, let's get her on. But so what's going on, girl? How you doing? <laughs> For that intro, I'm doing fabulous. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy New Year, Ash. Thank you. So tell us quickly, in like two minutes or less, because we have a lot to talk sure. about, your back, how did you become a publicist? Um, you mean Orange County's rock and roll publicist? Heck yes. Which was uh, just debuted last week, right after Christmas. <laughs> um, so I started off um, at Cal State Fullerton get education and communications and since it's so broad I mean you really have to kind of discover what you're good at and um, you know just over over time um, it developed from marketing to event planning to public relations doing all of it and now like pretty much just doing PR and branding for companies because it's so important to you know show what you're all what you're all about on these social media platforms and as well get press for it so it really works hand in hand but um, okay. yeah, PR is fun I love it so what would you define PR as for someone who's new to that world oh, I, I love these questions yeah um, I mean PR is basically you know if you're it's just shedding it's brand awareness and you learn that in communications you learn that in marketing and now it's become such a trend you know um, branding and your personal brand but this is stuff I mean I learned wow like what 20 years ago now and uh, um, it's just so important today and I'm, and I'm so glad and so happy it is because it's you know really important for people to get to know you as a person and PR people hire me because I like to say I'm their cheerleader I'm the person that goes out there and makes sure that you're getting noticed that your brand is getting the attention it deserves I love that um how has actually this is a common question I've heard from our from some show guests what's the difference between hiring an advertising agency and a PR agency uh, the difference is uh, well one I mean buying an ad could be you know thousands of dollars just like PR but PR is more of a bigger reach cool and also when you buy an ad in a magazine yes you might be um, you know focused uh, in, in like a certain demographic certain people but you're not too sure who's really reading it so if you have a wider net you work with me for a month for a retainer fee and I reach out to not only let's say if you're a you know female businesswoman and you sell socks not only am I sell, not only am I reaching out to companies that are like I'm or sorry media that are all about socks right right or, right um, you know families I'm also reaching out to entrepreneurs and how they started that business and reaching out to podcasts and radio shows like yourself because being a female business owner I mean it's so much more than just what you're selling it's you as a person now you, you I think you know me I'm very I have very uh, blunt real spiritual talks with you and so I, I have to ask you this and the way my brain works when I hear these shows is I sometimes get triggered by statements that I want to ask you something back not triggered in a bad way just triggered like in a curious way now when you say female business owners sure what how can someone you know leverage the fact that they're a female business owner but in an authentic way because let me before you answer let me tell you where I'm coming from I'm a big believer in entrepreneurship in the sense that if you have a good product, you have a good service, you're doing something authentically, uh -huh. you need to be successful, you need to crush it, your customers will say what you need to say. But whenever someone says in the beginning, and you haven't, but I'm just saying, when someone says, hey, I'm a you know minority-owned business, or I'm a female-owned business, or I'm a Indian-owned business, or something right. like that, how do you know if they're leveraging that for they're truly just a good business that's using that? as an accolade or the ones that are just taking advantage of that title because of their born, you know, ethnicity or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, male, female, sex, whatever. Well, if they're not taking advantage of, advantage of it, I will. I mean, get wow. your name out. Nice. You know? 
Yeah, I love that answer. Not? Okay, so many good. different avenues out there. Why not get as much attention as you can? Uh, like I said, people hire me because they do feel uncomfortable either promoting themselves, and plus they don't have the connections that I do for over the last 15 years. True. <laughs> but um, no, use those connections. So when I say female business owner, I mean, do I see my, of course I am one. Um, have I used that a little? Just, you know, being in the industry for so long, I've been able to get attention just for my business. But yeah, if they're a female, I'm going to go after podcasts that focus on females that, you know, are, um, that, uh, overcome obstacles. For example, there's this podcast called the Blonde Bombshell Podcast that I've gotten a lot of clients on. Nice. Um, shout out to Stacy and Megan over at the Blonde Bombshell. Um, a lot of my, um, clients like to be on that show because it's, the females, if there's a struggle, great, let's talk about it. Or just, it's just, it's okay. It's okay now to use that. It's okay if um, if you have an Indian-owned business. I mean, I'm sure, you know, um, different ethnicities have their own radio stations. Correct, they do. I can always go out and reach out to them. I like doing that. Um, I'm not shy. <laughs> I like that. I like As that. As you can see, my double mic over No, here. I love it. You're. It's just It's just awesome. And... Uh, no, it's funny because, um, by the way, I need to connect you to Nina, um, who's who's one of my good friends. She's uh, she just signed up on this, and Ooh, she has this awesome, awesome uh, beauty on demand company called Preet, and yeah, it's really it's just because I when I said the word boss lady, she just magically appeared, and she's someone I would consider one. So um, okay, so let's talk about that specific media, and then we're gonna get into the the main topic about you know how personal branding can help a company owner or founder um, make more success for their business. What's your take for 2019 on the different types of media? Like, when does it make sense to do like a TV promo versus a podcast one or written? Because mm -hmm. I have a bias. I, I naturally, because I'm a radio host, I understand the power of what radio can do. I understand the power of what podcasts can do. I've been on probably over 100 podcasts, mm -hmm. I've been on TV, and I have my own opinion on the value of all of them can bring. But sure. you're someone who does this for a living where you place people and you, you strategize with them. What's your take on the three? Um, so I am the publicist that I, I mean, I realize, I mean, I love the underdog or the entrepreneur or, you know, the business owner and getting them exposure. Um, to me, that's really fun. And I, it's like it pulls at a heartstring. You know, I want to see people succeed and I'm, and I'm really good at getting people coverage. Now, you might be on um, television or you might have been in Forbes or all these great, yeah. um, you know, outlets, but you want, and then you want these clients that want to be on Good Morning America, which is great. And, and, you know, it's all about that person being persistent and getting you there. But let's not in forget those in between. Like, even now, live broadcasts are huge. Why? Because you can watch it on repeat. Like, I, now I could use this video thank you ash to go and put it on my facebook on my instagram and so it's gonna Very get true. bigger reach so when you get on when you get someone on television which is awesome and, and great for someone's career you're only like pretty much targeting whoever's watching that morning show and who's really watching it now it might have been great what 10 years ago um when you know stay at home moms or i mean i don't know just whoever's watching it but people are on their cell phones. So let's use social media and let's get you on those podcasts. What if it's like 10 dedicated people who, you know, are all about, like I mentioned earlier, stocks and you're on the right podcast that maybe only has a reach of like 2000, but those people go and buy your stocks compared to being on good morning America. You know, like you know, I get what you're saying. Yeah. 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 I like that. So, so you're saying targeted, targeted media is the way to go right now. Targeted media. But, um, you know, Tar yes, targeted media and go after um, those podcasts and, and those Facebook live shows that are going on now. Okay. Not, now, don't, you know, you know what, you actually know when, if, when something's a waste of time or not. So I, I bring, everything, <laughs> I bring things up to my clients, like should we, if they want to do this or not. But, um, so that's, let me ask you yeah. another question then. When you talk about if it's working or not, that's what we call metrics. What is, how, what are the different kinds of metrics that one should know assume someone is looking to hire a publicist whether it's you or someone else what are the things that a publicist should tell them like is it just listen you should focus on product sales you shouldn't focus on impressions i really want to understand like mm -hmm. those things that you should look for i mean i guess all those things count into play but it depends where they are in their cool. career and if they're in the beginning i like to do the first month a big reach where i send out a lot nice. of press but it, it is a little focus it's like again back to the female selling socks i'm gonna set, send a press release to uh family and parenting then i'm gonna send it to like you know entrepreneur magazine or, okay. or that kind of focus yeah. and then 
blogs about women, blog, uh, podcasts about business. So that's a big reach. And then you kind of focus in and, um, and so, yeah, so it's uh, getting that reach out, understanding, you know, who you're working with and letting them know to trust the process. Cause I have been doing this for a while and for a person who's looking for a publicist, go to their website and see who yeah. their clients are. See, read those testimonials. I tell all my clients, post your testimonials of people are saying great things about you. You need to post them everywhere. You know, I started doing that and I've seriously blown up in the last couple of years because of it. So let's actually talk about that. I'm One thing I'm really impressed with you is that you have a passion for music, specifically Heavy metal. Heavy metal. I mean, look at your outfit. People are seeing her. This jacket is just so bomb diggity. Yeah. It's, it's. <laughs> this jacket. It is. It's awesome. It's from Topshop, which you buy in Nordstrom's. I love Nordstrom's, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so, so speaking of that, um, you not only took your passion for heavy metal, but you found a way to become a publicist for some very well-known heavy metal names, and you have a and as a media influencer for like some publications. Talk us about that journey, because. Why I'm asking is because it's important for others who have a personal passion to take advantage of that passion to do a business out of it or to do something further in that passion because that passion, when people see it, can they want to hire you for other things. Yes. So um, as much as I love music, most of my clients are business owners and yep. entrepreneurs. I mean, they range from motivational speakers to um, clothing lines and... Um, I mean, as well, I have a, a black metal band. Um, but the way I've been able to leverage my name like, so wide and be able to be known as the rock and roll publicist that gets rock and results is because you have to, you make posts, you build your brand, uh, but you, have, you also have to live it, breathe it, and, and speak it. So I write for Rock and Roll Industries magazine, and I interview the biggest bands in hard rock and heavy metal. And from there, but I've been going to concerts since I was 14. I started listening to heavy metal, I think at like age five or seven I remember being really young so cool you know the older you get and the more you keep putting things out there and um, feeling confident with who you are you're able to create your own brand but I mean I you know I love the music and um and then also you can see definitely on my Instagram a mix of the both and so I even write publicist by day and metalhead by night and yeah that, you know and um, that really really helps out so um because of going to shows, I was able to be the, um, I reached out to, you know, some celebrities like Jim Florentine earlier last year around this time, I had his book come out. He's a comedian and was also on that sh um, show, that metal show. And um, I was just like, hey, you know, I would love to do your PR for your new book. And he was like, yeah, because he knew me because I'd be going to shows. And, and, you know, he trusted me. He actually inv he invested in me and believed in me. And we knocked it out of the park because of um, the music and, you know, him um, and what I'm able to do. I'm very persistent when I work with any client. I give everybody the same amount of attention. I was able to call KLOS, get him on Jonesy's Jukebox, um, did an interview there and a, and a couple other, like, well-known okay. podcasts. That's awesome. So, yeah, and um, you know, sometimes I think you just need that one awesome exposure. That's like um, catapult gets the ball rolling. Because um, ever since then, just uh, things have been coming in. But it's also years of like putting myself out there and um, it just consistency. I love it. Well, we're gonna take a quick break, and then when we come back, we're gonna dive deep into how company CEOs and leaders and founders can leverage, um, you know building their personal brand for their business. So I'm going to play a commercial and we'll be right back. Thanks.